like this one, from this side, it is, <coughs> here is a ground surface, this side, and here is a ground surface on the other side. First the question, which side is active, which side is passive? This is the first question. Here is your active. Here is your passive. So, and this side, your pressure will be something called K active. Gamma soil time H. We don't have H here, your pressure is zero. We have H here, this total distance from this point to the ground surface. So we have value. If you connect between the two value, you can get, get this uh, triangle pressure. For passive side, the same, your pressure equal K passive, gamma soil time H. At this location, we don't have H at the same level of the ground surface. At this location, we have H from this point to this ground surface. If you draw a line in between the two points, you can get this triangle. Any question so far? Gamma soil will be given. Yeah, I know this sand of soil. We know what is the gamma of sand. This soil is clay. We know what is the gamma of clay. This uh, soil is so, uh, silt. We know what is the gamma of the gravel. We know what it mix. We know what is the gamma for this type of soil. And we can measure these depth. So I can figure out what is the pressure. But wait, what is the value of K active? What is the value of K passive? We have two expressions for K active and another one for K passive. For each type of soil, we have something called phi, which is called the angle of internal friction of the soil. If you have sand, uh, sand is uh, consists of particles. These particles between each other making a friction. We have something called angle of internal friction between these particles, which is called phi. You can learn more about these parameters in soil mechanics next semester. So, based on what is the type of soil, I can figure out what is the value of phi. If you know what is the value of phi, which is angle of internal friction between particles of soil, I can k say, hey, k active equal one minus sine phi divided by one plus sine phi. K passive equal one plus divided by one minus. So right now, I can tell you what is the earth pressure on this side, and what is the earth pressure from the other side? Uh, if you remember, failure of the retaining wall for the previous video, because we have active pressure. And this active pressure, we don't have passive pressure enough to prevent any failure, so you can see this collapse of the retaining wall. So next time, we will calculate uh, with numbers. What is the active uh, pressure? What is the passive? This active pressure can be converted to air force, and this passive pressure can be converted to air force. So this force will be for F active, this force will be P, uh, F passive. So what, which one is greater than the other? So maybe, maybe this one is greater than this one, so we can expect sliding of the retaining wall. Maybe this height is too long, and this force will make something called overturning of the retaining wall. So all of these stabilities, we will talk about it next time, but first we learn how to convert the effect of soil on the retaining wall as pressure. Uh, we have active pressure, we have passive pressure. The only difference between the two sides we have something called K active, we have something called K passive. Any questions so far? Let's continue next time on Friday.